The decision of the owners of the Realty Building to demolish the 100-year-old high-rise in downtown Youngstown has sent shockwaves through the community. But is that the final word? The structural engineer's report on the destruction of the ground floor from a gas explosion last month and the current condition of the building paints a grim picture. The video of the blast made national news. One person in the building died, several were injured, tenants of the apartments in the upper floors have been displaced, and the adjacent international towers has been emptied of their 170 residents. The Stambar building, which houses the Devil's Foot Hotel, is also closed. The possible demolition of the Realty Building prompts this question. What does the future hold for the east end of downtown? Scott Schulich, a community leader whose participation in numerous nonprofit organizations has earned him high praise, addressed that question in a long letter to the Mahoning Valley's movers and shapers. I've invited Scott, who previously appeared on this podcast to discuss the future of Youngstown State University under President Bill Johnson, a right-wing politician, to join me today to talk about his vision in the wake of the realtor explosion. I've also invited Brenda Williams, an architect who served as the city of Youngstown's building inspector, who has analyzed the structural engineer's report that was commissioned by City Hall. I'm Bertram D'Souza, a veteran journalist who, during my 40 years at the now closed Youngstown Vindicator, wrote extensively about the resurrection of downtown Youngstown from the decrepit rundown area it had become following the closing of the steel mills in the late 1970s. Uh, thank you both, uh, Scott and Brenda, for joining us today. Uh, before we talk about the future, uh, given the decision by the owners of the realty building to demolish the 100-year-old high-rise, I'd like to focus on you know that uh, fateful day last month when the gas explosion destroyed the ground floor. Uh, there are a lot of unanswered questions, not only relating to the actions of the workers in the basement uh, who triggered the explosion, but of the city government leaders, the owners of the building, and others. Uh, and perhaps with the two of you, we'll get some clarity today. So uh, you've both read the structural engineer's report commissioned by the city um, on the condition of the 13-story building. Um, what is your takeaway of the findings, the conclusions, the recommendations? Brenda, I'd like to, for you to go first, given that you not only were once the building commissioner for the city of Youngstown, am I right? Uh, yeah, B oh. chief building was the actual title. It was the chief building, what was Official. that? Official. Official, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I will admit that your Facebook post uh, yesterday uh, threw me for a loop. Um, <laughs> You, the bottom line is you contend that the building does not have to be demolished and that it can be restored. I read the report and honestly, from a layman's point of view, came away with a very different conclusion. So talk to me about your overall uh, in a view of what has occurred, the whole situation, the report, the findings, the conclusions. And then Scott, I know you've also read the report quite well, uh, quite seriously. And and uh, then we'll have you weigh in as well. So go ahead, Brenda. Okay. Um, yes, I did have the opportunity to read the report, which was, I believe, two pages long. Um, I would have expected something of this severity and importance to be a much more in-depth report. Uh, the report noted that the diaphragm on uh, the first floor diaphragm which is just a, a way of saying the first floor structure mm -hmm. suffered severe damage and that some of the lateral supports which are the beams that connect into the vertical columns that some of those had been damaged there was no quantity given there was no sketch of the location of the damage um we can all see from the explosion that the damage appears to be uh, in the northwest corner of the building. And um, how you could reach a conclusion that the building has to be demolished 
with that little information, um, I felt the engineering report was akin to something that a first year engineering student would write. It lacked all the depth that I expected to see. Just to use some layman terms, um, the beams that are now not supported laterally, right. I, they are now extend two, to, two stories high instead of one. Right. Um, as that lateral and it and you to to think about that if you took an uncooked piece of spaghetti and put it between your fingers and and pushed up and down it would right. snap very quickly if you broke that uncooked spaghetti in half and pushed up and down on half that length it would be much more difficult to break so that's basically what the report is saying is that lateral support is um damaged, not gone, but damaged. There is no indication if one lateral beam was gone, two, 10, nothing. Uh, there are no, there's a photograph. There is no illustration showing the structural system of the building and where the damage is. I mean, to me, that's just elementary that that should be included in any report. Um, regarding damage to, to a structure. The Barber and Hoffman report struck a radius around the Realty Building at 210 right. feet, which is one and a half times the height of the building, correct. But from the damage that I've seen, and again, I'll use a, a layman's analogy, if you are sitting in a chair and the front left leg breaks, you fall forward and to right. your left. You don't fall the opposite direction. So where is the, the model, the structural analysis of how this building really would fall if by some, you know, two weeks later, almost three, that, that, that this building would actually fall? The other thing I did was just simple Google searches. I looked up uh, the Department of Homeland Security has a very extensive document about steel framed buildings, steel framed high rise buildings, just like the Realty Building and the report prepared by a team of engineers, structural engineers, states that these buildings rarely, and it stresses rarely collapse. So I th you mentioned, you, you saw my Facebook post also see the response from a local structural engineer concurring with my opinions on this building. Um, he, he doesn't want to be named, but um, he, he agreed with, with my opinion. Okay, Scott, uh, you've been actively involved in this thing from the very beginning, from the, the day of the explosion last month. Uh, and you've been trying to rally support among community leaders, politicians, um, business people, everybody, to try and focus attention on not only what occurred as a result of the explosion, uh, but where do we go from now, from here on? In your very long letter that you wrote to the movers and shakers of the community, um, you did not... Um, unlike um, Brenda, you didn't come out and say outright, the building needs to be saved. You sort of said, you know, we should do everything we can to figure out what to do and all. But if the building cannot be saved, therefore, you know, as a community, we need to come together and all of that. In reading um, the structural engineer's report, and then in reading uh, Brenda's um, response, uh, that you shared, uh, Scott, have you sort of come to a solid position now as to what should be done with that building? Well, that's a that's an interesting question, Bertram. <laughs> so Brenda's more of an expert than I am. She's right. got the background that I don't. But I have been involved with downtown revitalization for a quarter century yes. and have worked closely with Brenda professionally, socially, especially uh, going back to the Stambaugh building, which we can talk about maybe a, a, a bit later and, and, and how I've drawn some of my own conclusions. You know, when I read the structural engineer's report, and again, 
very much the lay person when it comes to reading something like that. What I read was not that this is something that needs to be raised immediately. It raised a flag in, in certain areas, but what it did say very clearly is that the building needs stabilized and the building's going to need stabilized whether it comes down or whether it stays up because um, that's just, that's what blows my mind that it's been nearly three weeks and that this building has not been stabilized from a public safety perspective. Right. That said, a lot has been transpiring, particularly since, you know, my rally cry to some fellow um, downtown stakeholders. And based on the fact that I've been in consultation with people like Brenda, other architects, engineering types, who are all saying that if the building were to fall, it likely would have fallen by now. Brenda gave a little more detailed explanation of that. Uh, many people have said, you know, when you look at 9-11, um, you look at the first World Trade Center bombing, uh, the first World Trade Center bombing took out a portion of the bottom of, of that particular tower, and yet people continued to go to work every day in that building while they repaired it. Uh, they moved the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse 100 feet many years ago, um, that there are things that have happened with earthquakes in L.A., you know, condos in Florida due to hurricanes and, and so on and so forth. And then if you bring in a real forensic uh, structural engineer, uh, they're likely to tell you that the building is going to be saved, a Turner Construction or a big outfit that has done large scale work. Barber and Hoffman, from what people tell me, and again, I'm the layperson here, is a reputable firm. But what was the scope of their assignment? What did they conclude? This was a very small scale type of, I mean, Brenda's pointed out many of the flaws and is Barber and Hoffman's expertise in what they were asked to do or is it in, in you know, are they experts in another area? So my opinion has changed a bit from, we could go either way to leaning more towards the building it sounds like it can be saved if there's the fortitude to save it. And someone gave me a scenario yesterday. If we were to replace a building like that with a modern structure that's 13 stories tall, right. it might be, you know, a hundred million or more to do that. If we were to repair this building, perhaps it's $40 million. The demo of this building might be upwards of 20 million. So if you're spending $20 million to tear down a building, you should be looking at repair, especially if it is stabilized and deemed safe. Because once it's deemed safe, then it's also deemed that it's likely to be repairable. So that's kind of where I have shifted on that short-term aspect of stabilization. My longer-term concern is what happens to downtown, whether the building's up or not. We have and, Eastern and, gateways. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And we can and we can discuss that because there are some examples of tearing down old buildings. You see, on the west end of downtown, you've got Voinovich, you've got Taft, you've got all of those buildings. But it took a lot of coordination, a lot of political, and you know, private. But uh, Brenda, uh, let me come to you. You are an architect uh, by profession, but you also were a public a public official. You worked for the city of Youngstown. Yes. Is it not the role of city government uh, to take into consideration first and foremost uh, public safety? And then at the, at the other end of the, of the spectrum, you have a building that is privately owned. And so the owners of this building, perhaps talking to their lawyers, talking to the insurance companies, talking to everyone, are saying, hey, guys, if you don't tear this building down, you know, you are liable as a public firm, you know, for whatever happens. Uh, and so, you know, do you really want to invest millions upon millions to restore that building? So Scott, you know, while, while Brenda comes back on, could you, uh, could you address the, the public and private concerns? Well, you know, obviously there are multiple interests here. Uh, the building owners have their own vested interest and, have their own um, agenda, if you will. And, and of course they own the building. Uh, I'm not sure that ownership has clearly been identified exactly who or what entities and in what proportions they own this building. Um, you know, they may have reasons for wanting to make the case to the insurers or others 
that the building needs to come down. Those may be financial concerns. I don't know this. This is mere speculation. They may, um, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly where they stand. And of course, then you've got the city um, who has a different agenda and different interests than should. And, and so right. you have yeah. these competing interests. But from a from a from city government standpoint, can you understand <clears throat> the caution uh, on the part of of the mayor and of course, uh, uh, of course, you know I think, <clears throat> and and that's what kind of is frustrating that we we don't have the stabilization thus far. And there may be a lot of reasons I don't know for that, and I would hope that the mayor and 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 those officials in city government are in talks with the state, with the feds, with, with the people who can bring help and support. I hope they're keeping in mind the public investment that was made in this building a decade or more ago, and that there's a responsibility to the taxpayer and a responsibility to the stakeholders about how this plays out. Absolutely, there should be lots of caution as it relates um, you know, to the city, because who indeed has liability? We don't know that yet. Um, right. Are the owners liable for what happened? Is the gas company liable for what happened? Is the city liable for what happened? Is this private entity that was conducting the work there uh, responsible? And that's going to come out in, in an investigation, which also begs the question, if there's an ongoing investigation by NTSB, there's a wrongful death lawsuit out there. Um, I'm not sure we should be so quick to tear down the building as much as we should get it stabilized so that that, that that report those reports can be issued in a timely manner let's go back to private uh, public um yes. uh, concerns um so you're an architect and and you've you've analyzed the structural uh engineers report and have come to the conclusion that the building uh, can and needs to be saved however if you were still on the public payroll if you were still working for the city of youngstown what would your advice to the mayor be looking at this thing, bearing in mind that uh, you know you have you're a public servant and and your priority is you know public safety? Right. Um, Scott alluded to it earlier. I actually was in that position in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, uh, with the Stambaugh building. And um, the owner, private owner, Lou Frangos from Cleveland, was removing all of the windows from the building. And I walked over to investigate from City Hall, and a window pane about four feet by five feet fell from the ninth floor and exploded at my feet onto the street. Hmm. And I immediately... Um, ordered the entire block cordoned off. I ordered them to stop work first, then ordered the entire uh, block to be cordoned off. We had to shut down BW3s, um, all in the interest of public safety. And, um, and then I had to go head to head with the developer to make him do repairs to the building and return it to its original condition. And uh, Scott, um, got an, uh, a large group of, of people concerned with downtown development uh, to back me up. And it was it was a, a long fight, uh, but Mayor J. J. Williams stood right beside me and helped me through that fight. And uh, the owner put the windows back in the building and the building ended up being renovated into the Doubletree Hotel. Right. So, um, yes, public safety always comes first. If I were still the building, building official in the city of Youngstown, um, I would have on day two ordered that the owner stabilize the building structurally so that people didn't have to be evicted from their homes so that the people who live in the Realty Tower could go back in and get their belongings so that International Towers didn't have to be evacuated and those po folks had nowhere to go. Um, public safety is always the first concern. The city no longer has a building department. Um, it was eliminated and turned over to the county. And in everything I've read um, on the news and, and online, 
I don't see any input from the building official. I, I may have missed it. It may be there, but um, where is the building official's response? Why isn't he holding uh, their feet to the fire to, to stabilize this building? Uh, when you say stabilize, and, and obviously I'm I'm operating totally blind in this yeah. in this arena. There was an explosion. The ground floor blew out. Some, a part of the ground floor blew out, and the um, structural engineer uh, that was hired by the city says the ground floor damage has significance to the building's lateral load resisting system. And then it says the analysis indicates the lateral movement and stresses um, from these loads will nearly double with the removal of the ground floor. A more thorough analysis was beyond. So if, if they're warning that you cannot remove the ground floor, how do you reinforce? A the simplest solution would to be to transfer the ground floor load to the second floor. So you would put external columns, thread beams through the building and transfer the load of the structure to a support system that's underneath the second floor. Okay. Transfer that load to the ground. It's called a continuous load path. So you put the weight of the building and the build, weight of the building has to be transferred to the ground. So um, a structural engineer could design uh, a system that would <clears throat> effectively support the top floors of the building, uh, secure the building, make it stable so that repairs could happen to the uh, first floor diaphragm and the lateral beams. Uh, Scott, in, in your involvement in this, and I know you've talked to city officials, you've talked to business leaders, you've talked to downtown business leaders who are particularly concerned with, you know, not only with the construction taking place throughout the central business district, but now with this. Um, have you gotten an answer as to why the uh, realty building has not been reinforced or secured and uh, or made safe yet? I have not, Bertram, and that sort of prompted my my own personal frustration and, and, and casual conversation with many people. It's what prompted me to reach out to, again, fellow stakeholders and people that, that I know well to say, we need to do something. And it was, my intent was to provoke conversation. And it appears four or five days later that that was successful in provoking conversation. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I think many people are baffled by some of the things Brenda is, is saying, right. that why has this not happened yet? Um, yes. And why hasn't the owner been ordered to do that? I think Brenda just gave a very good explanation because there's no longer a, a building uh, department. And, and you see the quick reaction years ago with standby that Brenda outlined versus what's happening here. So these these stakeholders, particularly when you look at the, the retail or the um, restaurant establishments, they dealt with COVID and a shutdown that was not of their making. They've dealt with the convoluted street reconstruction uh, that has seems to be without um, strategy that um, it's not been coordinated well and, and that's cause streets to be closed and opened and reclosed again. And then you have this cherry on the Sunday, this, this explosion, which again, no one could have planned for. And throughout those last several years, there's been no voice for many of those stakeholders and there's been lack of response to their, their need. This is their livelihood, many of them. Right. And so you've seen at least one restaurant reduce its hours and move most of its operations to a suburb. You've seen another um, a bar establishment close up shop. Um, you, you, you hear rumblings from others that they're not gonna be able to make it. You have the bistro particularly affected. Right. And you know if you look at what Brenda suggested, once, once Stambaugh was cordoned off and once 
the owner was able to, you know, devise a plan to restore. I mean, BW3 was open pretty quickly um, in, in that it, building at that time. <laughs> it was, and that was because I agreed to allow them to build a covered walkway to get into BW3. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the event any glass would fall, there was a safe uh, passage. So there's there's stark differences here in, in terms of how this has been handled. And um, I think that's you know manifesting itself in, in what is moving from frustration to anger. Right. Um, so let's talk realistically. This building is privately owned. We don't know exactly, as you said, Scott, about the ownership, there's a company called Greenheart Companies that, you know, it's, it's plural and we don't know what they are, but this is an individual from Canfield and uh, we we'll all heard the name uh, and they have cho chosen not to, not to sort of make themselves available to the press and all of that to talk about it. But they obviously, uh, after the mayor ordered them to come up with a action plan, uh, the company principals met with lawyers and uh, insurance companies and others, and then announced that they were going to. They decided to tear the building down. Of course, it sh that's sent shockwaves uh, through the community naturally, because this is, as we all said, this is a very significant, um, you know, part of the central business district. So, what kind of pressure can the city bring to bear? on the owners to do, Brenda, what you would say is the right thing, not only to stabilize and reinforce first, but then to save the building by, you know, bringing in a structural engineer, of you know, architects and all of that and, and sort of redesign it. But what kind of pressure can the city bring to bear on this? The Ohio Building Code gives the building official uh, the legal right to um, protect the safety of the public uh, when a building is in imminent danger. Okay. And this building is in imminent danger, not of collapse, but there's a, a hole in the street. There are loose pieces falling off of the building. Um, so there is nobody in the city of Youngstown who has um, those rights because of they're not having a, a, a building department anymore. So it would it would have to go through the building official of Mahoning County is the one who should be putting pressure on this owner to um, remove the imminent danger that this right. building currently presents. And and Scott, so say say the owners um, being uh, persuaded by what you and Brenda are saying here, decide okay we're going to come in, we're going to reinforce, we're going to stabilize, all right, as a first step. But then there are also business people who have I don't know if they have shareholders, I don't know if they have partners or whatever, who have who look at the bottom line, and so. They'll sit there and they look at the bottom line and say, all right, say, say we save the realty building and we get rid of the ground floor, the first floor, you know, and then start the building up from the second floor on up and, and you know, have the apartments and all of that. Isn't that a risk for any business person to take to say, okay, this building was involved in a gas explosion, the video of which has made national news. Uh, there are structural problems. And so, you know, we'll invest in restoring this building. And what if nobody wants to come in as tenants? Because- Well, I, I think that's a, a legitimate risk that any business person would take. Look, 15 years ago, when that building was renovated and no one lived downtown, the original owners or investors took the same risk to wonder if anybody would actually uh, move in. I mean, it was sort of a, if you build it, they will come kind of thing, which is, right. which is a, which is a big risk. And look, there have been lots of buildings destroyed and not destroyed, but damaged um, that people have moved back into uh, 
houses burn down or houses have fire damage and people still move back in after they're repaired. Uh, again, I'll give you an example, condo damage from hurricanes in, in Florida and other places, you know, the structure stands and the, the everything else is, is rebuilt and, and people move back in. You know, whether or not Realty remains the kind of uh, residential building that it has been um, is another thing. Maybe it's a mixed use building. Maybe it returns to being uh, office space. Maybe it's a combination of all of those things. And I think once the public is assured, as Brenda states, that the building is deemed safe by people who are certified to do that, like building inspectors and structural engineers, and the appropriate repairs are made, that should send a message to uh, both investors and residents and potential tenants that, that, it, that it's safe. It's a risk that anyone takes. But if I buy a home that's 40 or 50 years old or 100 years old, unless I have some sort of structural engineer look at that, right. I'm not so sure that what I'm buying is is safe either. And we take that chance every day in life, no matter what building we walk into or we decide to occupy. Uh, and, and Brenda, that, that raises the question that goes back to the very beginning as to how, why this explosion occurred. So the city of Youngstown, uh, the Board of Control, um, awarded a no-bid contract to the owners of the building to do that work in the basement because of the road work that was going to be done in front of Realty the wiring and all of the kind of other stuff in the, in, in the basement that needed to be addressed, including there was the gas line. Now, nobody knows for certain, you know, who this group was that was hired by the owners to do the actual work. But in a project such as that, in your experience as a, as the building inspector, official of the city of Youngstown, should there have been oversight by the government entity as to what was going on, uh, as to what kind of work was being done? We know that, by, for example, when the city does resurfacing, you know, it sends out its, you know, somebody from the engineering department to make sure that they take core samples and all of that kind of stuff for the asphalt. Uh, should there have been somebody from the city monitoring this work? That would not fall to the building department. That would fall to uh, Chuck Shasho, the deputy director of public works. Um, architects don't really deal with underground utilities. Um, so, yeah, that's the engineering department of, of Youngstown that should have should have been, yeah, overseeing that. And when you were, when you found out that this explosion occurred because the gas line had been, you know, cut or whatever, however they did this. Uh, and then the crew started hearing the hissing of gas and started running. Why would that have occurred if that was not part of the scope of the work? That's a fabulous question. And I also, um, has that conclusion been reached? Did the NTSB report say 100% that it was because of that gas line? I I've seen nothing in writing that absolutely clarifies that that was the cause. Where is the NTSB report? They, they have said, they did put out a report, a, a preliminary yesterday. And... Oh, did yeah, I and it, yeah. It, it did talk about the gas line, and and okay. it talked about uh, there was a there's, there's now some discussion as whether there should have been gas in that line or not, no gas in the line, and that's and right. so they are, uh, they're they're talking to the um, they're dealing with the gas company on that, but yeah, I mean, you send in a crew down there, and and you say, okay, here's the scope of the work, you know. Be sure not to go anywhere close to that gas line because we don't know right. what it is. We don't know if it's active, passive. We don't know if there's even gas in that line. Right, Spout? Has, has the Public Utilities Commission been part of any of this investigation? I haven't seen that yet. And I may, you know, I might have just missed it, but Scott might know. Um, no, I have not seen that either, Brenda. I mean, that's a very interesting that, question. That's who I think would, would exactly. make the information. 
exactly. Uh, and so let's talk about the future. So we have two avenues. We have uh, the restoration and the saving of the realty building slash tower, but it's actually the realty building. If you look at the historical plaque outside the building, it says, you know, realty building, not tower, but, you know, everybody's calling it tower. So that's one avenue to find a way to save it. Uh, government gets involved with the owners and finds federal grants, state grants. That perhaps is where uh, President uh, Bill Johnson of Youngstown State University, who you know, publicly boasted about his influence to and, and his ability to get money from the feds and from the state because of his political connections. Perhaps, you know, you, you Scott, can tap him to be the lead person to go after federal and state grants to help restore this building. So that's one way. And, and it will take a lot of concerted effort by the community. The second way is the owners are given the green light to tear the building down. And that raises then the question, what comes next? So the two of you, uh, Brenda, go ahead first, since you know you have you're very familiar with downtown. Yes. Go ahead and talk to us about that. There are two avenues, demolition or renovation, but they both start in the same place. They both have to start with stabilization of the building. You can't just push a 13 story building down. Um, the, the demolition would have to be done carefully because of surrounding structures and the building would have to be stabilized prior to that happening. So in the immediate sense, and it's three weeks later, the fir very first thing that needs to happen is to stabilize that building get people back in their homes. And I'm talking about the International Towers. Right. Um, so no matter, and that gives time for those sorts of investigations to be made, to look for federal money. You know, FEMA could offer money for this. The Department of Homeland Security might have some input. This building's on the historic register. Has right. anybody checked that out? Um, so, I think the, the most pressing need is to stabilize the building and then make decisions. So it, from your vantage point, having worked in the city, the mayor, the law department or whoever could send out a notice to the owners of the Realty Tower today saying, starting tomorrow, you will come, you will send your crews and you will stabilize this building. No delays. Does the city have that ability to do that? No, but the county does. The county that, does. That would have to come from the, the chief building official of the county has that sort of power over the structures in the city of Youngstown. Scott, have you had any chance to talk to county officials at all about this? I have not. And, you know, I was unaware until our conversation today yeah. with Brenda that the, the building department in the city did not exist. And I think that was is, I. Yeah. that's a that's a, a very important question. Why is there silence from the county building inspector separate from all these other things that are happening? Um, you know, I go back to that fateful day uh, in, in the summer of 08 or 09, whenever that was. And, you know, Brenda walked across the street because right. she she knew what was going on. You know th this explosion figurative, figuratively and literally you know cast a, a wide sound across the city and the county um why wasn't the building official driving down to be on site almost immediately it's a question i can't answer it's one i'm sure brenda can't answer i'm not even sure who that individual is um so i don't want to be overly critical maybe maybe that's happened and we just don't know about it uh and i and let's hope that it has uh, but We've not seen any uh, directive if, if they have been exactly. on site. And I think that's what we're hearing Brenda say is that uh, that individual or that department has the power to invoke the kinds of things that would be in the best interest of public safety to get the other two buildings back online, a hotel running, a restaurant running, exactly. people back into um, you know their, their residences, get a bank open. You know, the Huntington Bank is 
has a, has a branch that's closed, not to mention the destruction of the, the Chase Bank. So um, the more we talk, the more questions there are, unfortunately. Exactly. That's the way this is, has been evolving. Uh, Brenda, how complicated is it, and you're an architect, to stabilize a high rise after an ex a gas explosion, after an explosion such as this? Uh, well, my, my first thought was that you get the weight off of the basement columns. And the way to do that is to build an exterior set of beams and columns that support the upper mm -hmm. floors of the building. Would that be an, a difficult solution? Probably, but nobody's even trying. I mean, you would have to assess the ground around the realty building and be sure it could support the weight. Oh yeah. You, you would possibly have to drill concrete piers called caissons to support that. Then there's vibratory loads from that drilling. Would that have an effect on the structure of the realty building? Um, I am not a structural engineer, um, but the structural engineer that I did have conversation with agrees that you take the weight off of the base of the building. Hmm. And Scott, the future. Um, I know that is keeping you up at night. Uh, you, as you say, you've uh, been involved in the redevelopment of downtown for a quarter, uh, for 25 years or more. I've written about downtown redevelopment for the 40 years I've been at the Vindicator. And uh, the West End, the redevelopment of West End was a, a true partners, public-private partnership. And the, the newspaper, the Youngstown Vindicator, when it was publishing, played a very significant role. The owners of the paper made a lot of commitments, uh, yeah. both uh, with the newspaper, editorials, and my columns and all of that, but also financial, to do something on the West End to clean up what had been, you know, at the time, uh, you know, sort of uh, dilapidated buildings. And now we have a very vibrant West End, uh, which is, you know, you have the incubator, you've got Voinovich, you've got Taft, you've got, you know, some really good things going on. Um, in your vision, um, if in fact realty has to be demolished, uh, what do you foresee occurring? Well, that that therein lies the question that I ask. You know, what is the outcome of this situation? Whether the building stays or the building goes, as I mentioned, this is the cheering on the the, the Sunday. We already had COVID. We had the the, you know the multi-year road closure debacle. We've right. had this. We've 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 seen Eastern Gateway, um, the the demise of that institution. There's a block empty. This east side of the square is now empty. The right. west side of the square is barely uh, occupied with tenants in those buildings. You've got Federal Street part of it offline. You've got 20 Fed under construction. How that plays out and all this, we don't know. You had the, the the incident at the Purple Cat building, which is, you know, causing some dismay down on the West End. I mean, you've seen in a few short weeks in, in the last month or two, essentially most of downtown go offline. And, you know, that negativity breeds more negativity. I'm trying to look at it from a positive perspective is that how how can business leaders and civic leaders lock arms in a very neutral way and in a very altruistic way where everybody's out there for the same cause, bigger organizations, smaller organizations to say, what kind of downtown do we wanna have? What do we need to do to get there? Have we studied the economic impact of these buildings and these institutions going offline? I'm sure it's already in the millions. And you know, how do we restart commerce uh, downtown? How do we get these streets completed and open? Uh, How do we restart business? How do we restart business in a construction zone, whether that be a demo zone or a construct, re, you know, a, a, rest, right. a restoration zone? That area is going to be under construction for a long time. I mean, some have said, and Brenda may be able to speak to this, that even a demolition could take months. And if a demolition takes months because of the strength of the structure above, um, that may keep the hotel and International Tower offline. 
That's right. going to have financial implications. So what are we going to do as a community to move forward, which is probably going to take years at this point in time? We've already seen a reversal of so much progress in a very short window. Yes. And, and that's where I want the conversation to go. And that's where I, I hope that people will come to the table soon. And I'm working on that. Um, that we can have that kind of conversation. We can develop a concrete timeline and plan. Uh, and I agree with Brenda. In the short term, that group probably should work on how is this area stabilized? Yeah. Because until that area is stabilized, we can have wonderful plans about where downtown Youngstown goes. But if the central square is closed off to foot traffic, it's not going to matter. Sure. Well, I know that uh, you and Brenda have been communicating a great deal. And so you are, the two of you are already at the table. Um, uh, are you getting any response from others that who I def describe as movers and shakers, uh, both from the private and public sectors who, who want to join you in this endeavor to, to sort of think, to think ahead? Well, the four or five days since I put out an email, uh, somewhat in haste to as many people I could think of, and I knew I left folks off that list, right. um, and, but I did ask people to share that. Um, I did not expect necessarily the, the media uh, outpouring that, that it's caused. Oh. Um, it, I sent it to stakeholders. Of course, some of those stakeholders downtown are media people, right. so right. It, right. it's kind of gone viral. That was not the intent, but it was also not confidential either. I wanted right. to to include as many people as possible. I've had over 60 inquiries directly by email, by telephone call um, or text message saying, I'm in. Some have offered lengthier uh, suggestions, uh, kind of like Brenda's um, and, and some are just, whatever you need, we're, we're here. I've heard from public officials all the way up to uh, the federal level. Um, I've heard from city officials. Um, I've heard from business leaders. I've heard from media outlets. So it's broad based. And I would say the all are in agreement with whom I've heard from that we have to look at the long term vision. Right. Most uh, are in agreement that the building needs to be saved. And when I say most, it's not because there are people who are saying it should come down. Many don't feel qualified to offer comment on that. Right. But the general consensus and what seems to be the court of public opinion is moving toward Brenda's point. Let's get this building stabilized so that we can have a broader conversation about what is next, because you can't have that conversation uh, practically until we, we can do that. And, and Brenda, finally, I, I know you don't have an official position government-wise, but I, I, I do see in, in you and the way you've discussed this, a, 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 a sincerity to, to help and to assist uh, in, in whatever, whatever way you can. And so my question is, um, would it be beyond your scope to reach out to the county building inspector and to sort of offer you know, your perspective and your advice and your guidance. Um, because you have, you know, experience in, in, in this, uh, you, because you were there, you know, as you had talked about the stand Um, Yeah, and I will go for, so far as to say that the county building official is not an architect. He is an engineer, but He's not a structural engineer. So this is a little bit beyond his purview also. Right. I've worked downtown for most of my career and um, know a lot of the people who should yeah. be active in this right now. Would I reach out to him? Sure, I would. And we'll make sure this, this podcast gets wide distribution so that... Yeah. People can see and hear from both of you. Um, again, thank you very much for participating. Thank you for joining me. Uh, as Scott knows, we have been talking about this and there is concern uh, about the future and what, where we go from here. Um, if there is a time when uh, 
it would be helpful for you to come back and, and uh, we can do a continuation of this conversation. Please be free to contact me. And meanwhile, thank you very much, Brenda and Scott. Nice seeing you again. We'll, we'll chat soon.